I'm Neil Gresham and I'm out on a, an athlete trad meet in Valle di Orco in Italy and uh, we've got a, a crew from La Sportiva here, uh, all of them like top elite level climbers, some of them super experienced at sport climbing uh, but have never climbed trad before so we're just going through some of the basics, uh, we're at the base of the crag and we're just going to practice putting in some gear and we're going to do a little focus on how to place nuts or wires if you want to call them. So placing nuts, well the first thing to say is that a lot of people when they start off trad climbing try and default to placing cams. They, they kind of feel a little bit easier to understand and they're also tolerant of a, a broader range of different crack sizes. Whereas if you place a nut, it has to fit the crack absolutely perfectly and precisely, which takes a little bit more doing. And of course, when you're hanging from your fingertips on a climb, it just feels easier to shove a cam in. So what's wrong with that? Well, the answer is, first of all, cams are expensive and it's a case of, you know, how many can you afford? But also cams are heavy. There's a limit to how many you can carry. So let's just say you've got like 10 cams on your harness and you use them up on the first half of the pitch. <laughs> what are you going to place in the top half of the pitch? So a really good like standard procedure would be to almost like alternate, place a cam, place a nut, place a cam, place a nut. The nuts are lighter as well. You can get a lot more protection on your harness with nuts than you can with cams. Okay, so let's have a look at the, uh, the whys and wherefores. First up, racking up. Now, every climber has their view on how you're gonna do this, but the method I'm gonna show you is the one that I use. You may wanna find a system that, that works best for you. Now, for a typical trad pitch, I would split the wires into two bunches, large and small, and you'll have a few medium sizes on each to cover that kind of overlap. Now, I like to actually mix different brands. I've got some walnuts here and I've got some stoppers because I, I kind of like the different shapes, but some climbers find that a little bit confusing and they just like to stick with one brand. It's, again, it's a personal thing and it will to an extent depend on the type of rock that you're climbing on. I'd have a selection of quick draws with me of different lengths, short, kind of like long or medium, do you want to say, and then a, like a sling draw so you can really lengthen and extend the, the wire placement. So sometimes with the same placement, it's possible to get different sizes of nut to fit within reason. So let's explore some of the margins here. I mean, I've decided that the optimum size for this placement is a number seven, and that just seats perfectly and deeply into the crack. But if I was to go up to, say, a number 10, it's just not going in deep enough. It's only biting on the bottom corners. It, I mean, it might be all right, but it's not really seated securely. And in fact, it could, it could come out. Now, conversely, if I went down to a number four, whoa, you know, I mean, it's just biting in the very bottom part of the, of the crack here. It might be all right, but I wouldn't fancy it. So, you know, you, we're saying that the seven is the, is the optimum. You could probably get the, uh, the eight to work as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, the eight's pretty good. Now, the other thing you can do, um, and this is a particularly useful trick if you're starting to run out of nuts on your harness, or if the crack is very shallow, is you can actually place the nut sideways like this rather than like this. But you'll need to use a slightly smaller size. I mean, in this case, let's have a go with a number four side. Mm, no, it needs to be a bit bigger than that. Let's go number five sideways, and that's really, really good. But this also works especially well if the crack is flared because the, when you place them sideways, the nut has tapered sides which will match the kind of flared profile of the crack. So obviously you wouldn't do that amount of experimentation with, with each nut placement or you're going to be on this climb all day. You know, you're going to strip it down and you're going to make those decisions more quickly. And the ability to make those decisions quickly, of course, comes with a lot of practice. Right, so now it's in. The big question is, how much do you have to tug it? And you're going to be tempted to yank it down like that. And this isn't very friendly to your second who's going to struggle to get it out. And it's just not necessary either. But like, com oh God, I've got it stuck. <laughs> this is what happens. Now, conversely, if you don't tug it at all, there's a chance that it could just lift, lift out. Um, so what you do, you know, the truth lies somewhere in the middle, is you just give it a little, just to seat it. And then next up, you're going to have to decide what length of quick draw you put on. And in doing this, look down the pitch, see how your ropes are running. If you sense they're starting to drag a bit, then you want to start thinking about using longer quick draws. You also want to look above. If there's an overhang that the rope's likely to drag around, then you're going to need to use a longer draw. In this case, I'm just going to put a medium length draw on the, on the wire. I also want to think about which way the quick draw is being 
pulled by the rope and check that the gate of the carabiner isn't going to be like knocking on any protruding rock features because that's the, the, the thing that you really don't want is the gate to open in the event of a fall. And then I'm clipping my rope and away I go. But I can't emphasize enough how important it is to do this at ground level, at the base of the crag first, before venturing up onto a route. This is a really great way. You can find a load of different cracks to practice placing nuts and cams. But the best part is that you can clip into them and you can weight them. And that's a really good way, you know, just to develop that trust and that confidence before you do it on a big pitch, for real. Thanks for that, Neil. Some essential tips in there. If you're looking to pick up a trad rack, then there's links down below to our selection of climbing nuts and the rest of our trad gear on the Epic TV shop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.